Welcome to We Working Women live stream. I'm Vera Tsui, CMO of We Working Women. With a mission of inspiring personal, professional, and business growth through unity and community, We Working Women connects subscribers and partners around the world with the model We achieve, we empower, we impact. First launched as a WeChat blog in October 2015, We Working Woman has rapidly evolved into a vibrant media platform and digital community of readers, contributors, and corporate partners. We connect online through content and conversations, as well as offline throughout events, professional development workshops, and speaker events like tonight. Nowadays, We Working Woman has been ranked as North America's leading digital company that connects and showcases global Chinese women's capabilities and influences. Tonight in our live stream, we're thrilled to have Vanessa Wexki. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Say hi to our audience. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so first, let me... Um, introduce Vanessa a little bit to our audience and who is Vanessa, right? So Vanessa Wetsky is the founder and executive director of Low Entropy, a nonprofit organization that is making personal development available to all. And in doing so, providing people with tools to change themselves and the world. From high school dropout and homeless math addict to world traveler and successful business owner, Vanessa has overcome many of life's adversities. Her diverse life experiences have helped her gain a significant amount of empathy and understanding of which she shares through creating various facilitated programs that help people find purpose, meaning, and direction in life. Vanessa lives in British Columbia with her husband and their blended family of four children. She is a voracious learner, working closely with renowned physicist and author of My Big Toe, Tom Campbell. Vanessa is currently working on her first book entitled My Big Eagle, a practical application of My Big Toe. So tonight we're excited to have Vanessa here to talk about her personal and professional journey and share how to start a movement and build a community to support your vision. And let's learn about the personal development tools that enable us to become change makers. So Vanessa, welcome again. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so excited to have you here tonight. Um, Vanessa and I got to know each other. Well, we, we, we meet each other <laughs> actually in Vancouver at a TEDx youth um, speech uh, event. Uh, I because my son Aaron he was one of the speakers so I was the front row biggest fan mom they're listening to all the speakers sharing their lives experience their stories and when Vanessa came on the stage her story was so inspirational you know I had goosebumps I was crying in the end I was like I have to invite Vanessa to We Working Women and share her story to our audience. So tonight, we're really, really happy to have you here. And we can't wait to hear your story, Vanessa. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I'm super excited to share and connect with everyone. Yeah. So Vanessa, why don't you start to share a little bit about your personal experience with us and let us get to know you a little bit more? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I, let's see where to start. I was always very inquisitive my whole life and very, very curious to understand, understand my purpose. Ever since I was a kid, I was trying to figure out, you know, what am I, what am I doing here? What's the point of, of existence of life? Like, there's got to be more to life. And I searched all my youth and into my adulthood to find answers to life's big questions. Like, why am I here? What's the purpose? Um, this took me down some interesting paths. <laughs> I went down some, some really dark paths, but also experienced a lot of, of goodness in this world through mentorship. Uh, so my parents divorced at a young age, and I was put into foster care, and I dropped out of high school and started connecting with, with the, the, the wrong, the bad crowd, got into drinking and drugs, and uh, I eventually 
became homeless by the time that I was 21. And so really uh, hit rock bottom. And when I got to that place in my life, it gave me, it gave me time to reflect and try to understand, you know, who am I and what am I doing here? I need to do more with my life. And so within that, that self-reflection, I came to this point where I, I was lucky enough, I was fortunate enough to, to have somebody come into my, to my world at the time to offer me a, a, a bigger picture and to help me see that there, that I am valuable, you know, that I am worthy. Um, and so from there, I started to believe in myself and, and started to gain more confidence in, in who I was and started to form an intention, attention that which gave me direction, gave me direction to pick myself up and move out of the state of poverty and into a place of empowerment where I became the creator of my, of my life, of my destiny. And from there, I, I moved back. I came to Canada. I started a life for myself, got myself a home and a business and a family and um, really, really learned through life experience. So that's a little bit about my myself, my story, my background. That's a lot of story within one minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it holds yeah. 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 So um, when I listen to your story, which uh, the TEDx video will be available, I believe, uh, in about a month. So we're going to share that video also with our audience. Um, so when I listen to your a story, it really touched me um, that... Uh, not everyone can pick up themselves at a lowest moment or it takes really, really long. So what was the biggest power that gave you the, the you know, the, the force to pick up yourself and mm-hmm. had a transition? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great, great question. You know, why didn't I just give up? Um, and what motivated me to start uh, believing in myself. I would say that it was the the kindness of others. Um, I could, I was, I was lucky in a sense that I did have some people come into my life at the time that I needed to hear the right message and um, tell me things about myself or believe in me. If I couldn't believe myself, at least I could see others and, and hear their words when they believed in me. So that gave me the, the courage or that gave me the, the confidence that I needed to start believing in myself. And, and I see that is true even to, to today, you know, at, through my journey, um, obviously starting my own community, my own nonprofit. When I first started, I, I was, I was broken. I was at a place where I, I just had divorced. I had lost with my business that I started with my husband and, um, I was feeling broken. And so I, I had kind of lost that confidence that I once had. I think it, we all kind of go up and down with it, right? We're not always super confident with ourselves. There's highs and there's lows. And it's how we deal with those lows that um, essentially creates your life, the choices you make. So what happened for me was I surrounded myself with good people. I surrounded myself who had good intentions and wanted to make a positive impact in this world. And because I was constantly surrounding myself with this good energy, it, it rubbed off on me. You know, there's that Jim Rohn quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And so we get to choose who we want to spend time with. And, and that's what really helped me was, was choosing to surround myself with good people who had good intentions and, and believed in me. Cause when they believed in me, I started to believe in myself. Yeah, I I really love it. Um, Surround yourself with good people, people with good intentions and get good and positive influence all the time. So today um, we had this little conversation. I had this little conversation with my daughter, actually, uh, on our way driving home. Uh, We were passing a traffic light and there was this, you know, always homeless people showing the board, right? like begging for money. So my daughter asked me like, mom, is this like lady homeless? Like why is she at begging for money here? It's really dangerous. So I, I, we had this conversation going on and she, she just said, I really wish there's someone that they can go to, to help them. You know, that really hits me. I'm like, Oh, 
that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. You know, like sometimes when I drive and you pass by those people, I really wanted to, you know, park and stop and talk to them and say, you know, like, how can I help you? Because not well, people are in bad situations, you know, for, for different reasons. But majority of the time, because they couldn't find help, they don't know where to go. And you were lucky, I was lucky that we were always surrounded or at the right time, we met the right person to help us and, you know, like just to drag us to, to pick up. But um, a lot of people, they don't. So, so I believe that's why um, community is very important. Um, that's also what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Community is so important. It's so important. And, and, you know, I talked about, yeah, I was lucky. I was lucky to have somebody come into my life and give me some positive energy. But I also was accountable in showing up and being able to receive that, right? So oftentimes what happens is when we're overcome by so much trauma, we close in on ourselves and it's this heavy, dense energy. and We can't we can't accept anything from anybody else because it's like we have this closed fist, right? So somebody comes and tries to offer you something, you, you just ha don't have the capacity to receive it. But once you start self-reflecting and understanding where the trauma comes from and that the trauma is not real and you can let it go, you start softening up and opening up to the point where your hand is now open and you can receive the gifts of positivity and love and acceptance that people are trying to give you because most people are genuinely good people. That's what I like to believe at least. Uh, and so, but it comes down to personal accountability and empowerment to be able to receive that, that, that good energy. Yeah. 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 Always open up ourselves and get ready to receive help and influence. Mm -hmm. Good influence. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so tonight our topic is how to start a movement and build a community to support your vision. Um, could you share with us how did you start your community? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So it most definitely started with the intention. Right. getting clear with what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be, and who I wanted to spend my time with, um, getting crystal clear on what that looks like, and then believing in myself, knowing that it is possible, and from there taking action to make that happen. So I knew that I wanted to, I wanted to make the most out of life, and I wanted to also make a difference in this world, right? So I got really clear on that. Um, I didn't want, I wanted to live my align with my life's purpose and once I set that intention where I wanted to be somebody who was living this really meaningful life that I could be proud of then that path just opened up for me where the right people and opportunities came into my life but it started with that thought with that intention um, and so it, and it wasn't a super smooth journey there either it still took me as I mentioned you know most of my life I, I was wandering around trying to figure out what am I doing here what is, what is the point of this? And it wasn't until it, it later in life, until I was in my 30s, where I finally got found answers for myself. And it wasn't through religion or dogma or philosophy or anything like that. It was through my own internal searching. Um, so once I got clear on what my purpose is, and now I understand it for me, my purpose is to let go of fear and open up to love and share that with others. Um, that's what my purpose is, but everybody's purpose is unique to themselves, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think with starting anything, you have to be really clear. So because I was so clear on, on my intention, that just naturally unfolded into, well, if I want to let go of fear and I want to become love or become loving and share that with others, then naturally people are going to you know gravitate towards that energy or other people of like minds are going to be attracted to that to that vibe and so from there i i started my first group which was called conscious connections and it was a, a safe space for people to come together and have deep meaningful conversations and connections with other people in the community and we would just meet once a week and um, we would meet for two hours and uh, meet at a park, uh, very casual, you know, and low key. And after a, a couple months of that, uh, it started growing and more and more people were coming to the point where I would invite other folks that were in that group, I would invite them to, to start their own conscious connections group because it was so popular. And then they would, they would, 
they would want to do it themselves. So they started their own groups and it just really naturally grew. After the first year, we had over a dozen different conscious connections groups across five different cities. And, and keep in mind, it was all free, right? It was anybody come, no matter who you are, you know, totally inclusive, no one gets left behind. So you get to meet all these diverse people with different unique perspectives. And, and together you you hold this big picture understanding of, of each other. Um, so that's how it, it all started. <laughs> wow. You know, I, um, my, you, you met my son, he, when he was eight years old, I always have this question for people. Maybe he's too young to discuss with, but I'd like to discuss with you. <laughs> like when people talk about their visions and their dream, you know, like majority of people, they will say, oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a teacher. All right. You know, like I want to be in this business or this industry. But I, I don't understand how people have this like a vision of I want to save the world. Like <laughs> I want to change the world. My son, when he was eight years old, I asked him, what is your biggest dream? He said, I want to save the world and end suffering. Mm -hmm. We're like, where did you have that? And he's like, the world is suffering. I'm going to use my talent, my power to change the world. And throughout the years, when, when I met people like you, having so many like visions, such great visions, and their ultimate goal is always to change the world. So I, I was like, I really wanted to know, like, from which point did you realize that, okay, this is my vision, I, I, I have this mission, I need to change the world using my power. Mm, that's a great question. That's that. Thanks. Because I wow. never had that. I never had that vision to change the world. And I wonder where your eight-year-old son gets it, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and 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 you are those doing what all the good work that you're doing, inspiring and influencing and supporting these women from around the globe. You're you are doing that. You're making a huge positive impact on the world. So I'm yeah. sure that's where your son gets it from. <laughs> Um, yeah, for me, I, I, I didn't definitely, when I was eight, I wasn't thinking I wanted to change the world. Um, yeah, and I didn't have like, the role models in my life who, who were doing that either, not on a large scale, at least. They were, you know, doing, uh, doing the best that they knew how at the time. And, and so for me, when I came to that, it was a slow progression. It, I really had to be clear with and accept myself. I had to get to that place where I, I fully, and I, I'm still working on a work in progress, but I had to at least get to some degree of acceptance for myself and understanding of who I am. I needed to understand who I am and also what my purpose is. And, and like I said, that took me until I was like in my thirties is when I finally got clarity around that. And from there, it probably came, I remember the first time, I remember very clearly, actually, the first time I said it out loud when somebody asked me, um, what do you want to do with your life? And uh, I was actually at an airport um, in Virginia, and he asked me, this This gentleman at, at the bar at the airport just asked me. Uh -huh. where he yeah, there is uh, um, a conversation I'll always remember, because um, he asked me, what What do you want to do with your life? And I, And right away, I said, I want to change the world. And that was the only time I'd ever actually realized that. And so I had already started uh, the, the conscious connections and low entropy was, was just beginning. We had our youth program, but I never quite articulated it until then because all these other steps were just, were just happening. Right. This, like I said, the path was appearing because my intention was clear in terms of, I want to like go fear. I want to become love, but I never really saw that on, on, on a large scale. And so one of the, one of the kind of mottos are saying is um, that we have at low entropy is change yourself, change the world. Right. So if we take responsibility to change ourselves in a positive way, then it'll have a ripple effect out into the world. Or as Gandhi says, you know, be the change you wish to see in the world. That's the philosophy that that I really stand by. Wow. So powerful. Change yourself, change the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so tell us a little bit about uh, low entropy. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so that's that's what happened was after Conscious Connections was running for the first year, after the first year, 
uh, some friends and I got together and said, you know, we really need something like this for youth, a safe space for youth and children to, to come and, and find themselves and be able to share their ideas and their opinions in a, in a, in a manner where they're not going to be criticized or made fun of or bullied, you know, where they can show up and be the, show their true colors and be appreciated and accepted for that. And so that's when we made uh, Youth Empowering Youth. Um, we started that. And when we started that, a friend of mine said, you know, if you're going to take this youth program and you want to do something with it where it can grow, you need to start a nonprofit. And that was the first time I ever heard about, you know, starting a nonprofit. I didn't know anything about that. But uh, I took her advice and I Googled it and started a nonprofit. And it was actually quite simple. Um, and then from there, I started talking to other nonprofits. I would interview their EDs and learn about, you know, how they got started and, and became a registered charity, put together a board of directors. And that's how the Low Entropy Foundation was born. So we are a, a registered charity. Um, our, our mandate, our official mandate is to further the advancement of education as it pertains to emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, all the programs we do, they all revolve around emotional intelligence. Okay, so what kind of program do you do? Yeah, so, of course, Conscious Connections. Now we have, we have two sessions every day reaching globally across the world because of the virtual ability of that. Right. Um, then we have Youth Empowering Youth which is in five different countries now. Um, and from there, our next program that we started was the CARE project. So CARE stands for Compassion, Acceptance, Respect, and Empathy. And we are doing our best to cultivate that within the community by helping people, by putting food on the table is what it appears to be. We deliver weekly food hampers to families in need, but it's more than that because that's just the that's just the starting point, right? That's the food is a, a peace offering. It's a it's a trust building um, way for us to connect with the families, right? They they see us delivering food to them. They want, are curious about what we're doing. We're curious about them as well. We want to learn about them. We want to walk alongside them and understand who they are and build these friendships in the communities. And so that's what we do through the help of volunteers within the community. Volunteer community connectors reach out to these families and build those friendships with weekly phone calls where we get to learn about the families. And understand what's going on in their family dynamic because food insecurity is just a symptom of something else that's happening and so by us building these friendships with folks in the community we can understand those root causes and then provide resources to address those root causes so that's um that's the care project which which started because of covid actually we started it uh, at the beginning of covid and now we still run it today um, so what was, um, could you share with us some like testimonies or some stories, um, in your foundation? Yeah. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, a database of them. To look up. <laughs> who, who have we impacted that has, you know, it's funny because it's not, I mean, they asked, there's a lot of families. And I remember when I was very hands-on delivering the hampers myself to, uh, families, um, on delivery day, I was you know, flooded with thank yous from all the families. And that, that's a really great feeling. Um, but it's, it's more than that. It's not just the, the families or the clients that we're connecting with, you know, the biggest impact or where I get excited is actually the volunteers, mm -hmm. the, the volunteers who come and they help just to see them come and, and, and feel like they have a sense of purpose, like they're contributing in a meaningful way. That's, that's what I get excited about. It's it's engaging, it's mobilizing people in the community to, to be helpful, to connect with their neighbors, to connect with their community and give back. Mm -hmm. um, so I see that, I see that all the time. Like usually every week I'm referring. So often what happens is people find us and they wanna gain experience. Um, say there's somebody who wants to be a facilitator is a great example, right? But they've never, they've never taught anything. Maybe they've gone to school and they've, you know, they've taken, some um, counseling courses, but they've never actually had any life experience. So they find us and we have tons of volunteer opportunities. If you look at our volunteer page, um, I think we've got like three pages full because we like to give people opportunities where they can, they can realize their gifts. 
And so that's what these volunteers do is they come and then they, they learn about us and they get to they get to try things out that they've never tried before in a real world setting where they're helping other people. Mm-hmm. And so for them to, to watch them make such an impact is, is super rewarding. And as I'm saying this, I'm trying to think of like one one example of a person that uh, that we've helped um, to do that. Uh, there's there's uh, all these faces are running through my mind right now. I mean, my husband and I just got back from, we're in Toronto, right? Um, mm-hmm. But I'm from Coquitlam near Vancouver. But while here, we actually went out with uh, one of our volunteers, just got back. He We went out for dinner with him uh, to, uh, where did we go again? We went to... Oh, Mandarin, Mandarin. Oh, Mandarin. <laughs> it's funny. I, I was at Mandarin yesterday. <laughs> oh, you were. oh, my goodness. <laughs> that was actually my first time. <laughs> Our first time, too. Yeah, yeah there's just um, there's so many authentic Chinese restaurants in Toronto. I never get the chance to go to Mandarin. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. But it was, no, we liked it. I mean, we were saying we haven't been to a buffet since our, our honeymoon. <laughs> like, oh, wow. so, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so we, we went out for dinner with, uh, with this volunteer and, you know, we've been working remotely for a year. He found us because he wanted to give back. He wanted to give back and make a difference in the nonprofit world uh, with charity, doing charity work. And so he's been helping us with, with IT virtually. And today was the first day we got to meet in person. And so, you know, it was, it was really incredible connecting with him and learning about him and hearing a story and um, being able to share our story and, and have that that authentic, genuine friendship that that was formed through this and and from there, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like um, I feel like it's it's a significant positive experience that he's he's having in his life that will then um, help him to make good choices for himself and for his family in, in their own life. That's, that's kind of big. I just don't want to give like, details of his life and everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I truly agree with you that, um, a lot of like positive results from a nonprofit organization is mostly for the volunteers, for people and stuff who work there. So I used to work at uh, a food bank in Montreal. I used to live in Montreal for uh, more than five years. Mm-hmm. And um, that organization, they help over 200 families. I actually never really like ha- had a deep connection with any of the families because every week they come, we have events like back to school events, bake sales, and you know, like we have different events for them. But I had so much like connections with all the volunteers right? Like 30 or 40 volunteers together. We have like a walkathon, we raise funds, and it was so meaningful and so fun to work together for a purpose, for a good purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I do think that, yeah, non-for-profit is really benefit. A lot of people love to sign up for non-for-profit because mm-hmm. they want to give back. Exactly. And yeah. feel like they're making a, a positive contribution in the world. And a lot of the, the clients that we support become volunteers or even staff actually we just hired um 20 10 people 10 youth and 10 folks uh, people with disabilities and, and a lot of them we just sent an email blast out to our community and i would say half of those people were already part of our community they're you know clients or uh, practicum students and so uh they we don't see you know one person is <sighs> When we're supporting a client, we try to build more of a, of a, a like friendship. So it's not that you know we're we're helping them because they're helping us just as much by giving us an opportunity to be helpful, right? So it's more of this like equal playing field. Nobody's on a different level. We're we're all we're all the same. We're all we're, I I feel that we're all human beings. We're all equal. We all have the same struggles and fears and insecurities. And um, I believe we should treat everybody with kindness and respect. Exactly. Yeah. So um, you yourself had such a life-changing experience, right? And I believe that you come up, do you also do coaching? You also do coaching. Oh, that's right. That's another program. Yeah, we've, I named about half of them, but yeah, one of the programs uh, is Enlivened Coaching. That's right. Um, So um, tonight we'd really love to hear your advice about some personal development tools that can enable us to become change makers. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was thinking about 
you know, what has helped me in terms of my own self-development, personal growth, and finding a mentor is probably what helped me the most. And, mm. and it, and again, it took me most of my life. I, I, I wandered around in the dark for a long, long time. And it wasn't until I was in my thirties where I met someone who um, I really resonated with. And what I liked the most about this, this mentor that uh, I now really uh, have built a friendship with, but um, what I liked the most was that it was always turning it back to me, you know, rather than telling me what to do or what the answers are, it was more of, well, what do you think, <laughs> right? What are, what's your truth? And it, it helped me to, to find what, um, to, to really identify, find my values and my own identity. So I wasn't taking on someone else's. Um, so mentorship has been huge. And then I'm always looking at different personal development tools and, and share. And that's what we do is we share them with the community. We invite people to share to, to make their own and what works for them. Um, in addition to mentorship, meditation has been really, really helpful in my life. I, I sometimes will have a regular meditation practice. What I try to do is, and uh, not that I'm successful at it, but I try to live my life in a, in a meditative state. Not like I said, I'm not there. But uh, that's that's the my intention is to be there is to always be mindful right so that I'm not I don't have to sit cross legged and, and be practicing meditation but I can always be mindful of my thoughts of my reactions and then choose my response accordingly so meditation has been very very helpful um, what I'm doing right now because as I mentioned there's always different tools uh, a, a one tool that I'm using right now that I, I'm quite fond of and I'm sharing it with my my team that I work with is I'm not sure if you've heard of it this is actually not new it came out about 15 years ago uh -huh. and it was, it was created by Will Bowen and it's he's the author of a book called a complaint free world and so yeah complaint free world and basically it uh it's a tool it's very tangible where you you try to go 21 days without complaining. And so you wear a bracelet on your hand and now that makes you more aware, right? So all day you've got this bracelet on your hand. And if you find yourself complaining, then you're like, oh, I, I complain. And now I'm gonna switch this, I'm gonna put on this hand. So I'm still on day one now, right? But I'll go tomorrow and I'll, I'll do my best not to complain. And by, by the end of the day, I realize if I haven't complained, okay, so I've gotten through day one. And then uh, tomorrow is day two and I start. And so the whole goal is to go 21 days. And by going 21 days, you form a new habit, a habit where you're focused on the positive. You're not, you're not complaining, you're not criticizing, you're not you know, putting people down or gossiping. And instead you're cultivating this really positive attitude. And so I love that because it is so aligned with my, with the philosophy of, you know, be the change, you know, change starts from within, um, where if you see something that's wrong, you don't complain about it and just, you know, say, oh, that's terrible and, and waste so much energy um, putting it down. Instead, what you do is you train yourself to focus on the solution, right? You can notice something is not working. So once you notice it, you can say, okay, so what am I going to do about that? Rather, rather than saying, oh, you know, that's that's a really messed up that thing over there they should fix it like who are they we are they <laughs> like we uh -huh. take ownership and and fix things ourselves so uh this is one of the tools that i'm practicing wow i i love this i'm gonna try this i think my my kids are gonna love this <laughs> <laughs> no complaint mom <laughs> 21 days at least <laughs> Wow, I, I love this method. Um, try 21 days uh, forming a positive thinking and practice it in, in daily life. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So you just shared, um, what, what's this method called again? So it's called a complaint free world. And oh, it was complaint free world. Yeah, complaint free world. Yeah. So that's, that's the intention, right? That's the vision It's a complaint free world. Because rather than people complaining, they then turn their intention towards something more positive, which is a solution, right? Because mm -hmm. and so then it's it comes down to well, what's the distinction, right? Well, what's how do you know if something is a complaint? Like mm -hmm. you can never complain, come on. And so he goes on to say, well, the difference between a complaint and a statement of fact is the energy that's expressed, right? So an example is if it's 
it, well, here in Toronto, it's humid and it's hot. And so um, what I just said is a statement of fact, right? Now, if I were to go, oh my God, here in Toronto, it's so friggin' humid, it's so hot, it messes my hair up, I can't even stand this place. How do people even live here, right? Like that's all that negative energy, that's a complaint. And so <laughs> that's you the You get scared, stared at. <laughs> I saw that somebody stare at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 that's the difference and, and it's it's that it's that energy <laughs> yeah and it's it's, it's some, a lot of times that we do negative thinking unconsciously right mm-hmm. i think that's the method that transform us um consciously like mm-hmm. you know like intentionally we realize that we should be positive towards even the smallest thing in life yeah yeah that's right and to be grateful right to exchange your uh, expectations for appreciation your yeah. world changes. and that that's that's the thing is it's just a habit we got into this habit we like the society we live in we thrive off of bad news and negativity and so if we want to break that habit we need to do some we need to be intentional about it which is why i'm really enjoying this i'm only on day when did we start this we started this on day on monday started on monday and so what's today thursday yes yeah, so day four Okay. Um, and I, I am still on day one because, because it's so like, it's <laughs> so I, yeah, every day yeah, there's some kind of a complaint. Um, we were doing the care project on the first day, actually on, on uh, no, I guess it was on Wednesday. We do the care project. So we were doing the care project and um, at the end of the day, we're on the third floor and we have to like bring all the food up the elevator. And at the end of the day, one of our, um, one of my colleagues said, oh, the elevator's broken. And I was like, oh, the elevator's broken. And I'm like, oh no, you just complained. <laughs> and it was the first day where I was like teaching it to everybody. And so, um, yeah, it's very habitual to get out of that, that complaining mode. But with practice and perseverance, it is possible. <laughs> wow, interesting. So what, what does it say on your bracelet? Oh, so, on well, uh, Will Bowen's website, you can purchase some, but I just, I, I didn't want to wait uh, to get them. So I just, I just purchased a whole bunch that had these motivational uh, quotes on it. So mine says, believe in yourself, um, but they're all, they're all different. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Very nice. Oh, we might have people asking um where to buy them. <laughs> yeah. A compl- it's a complaint free org, I believe. But oh. if you Google a complaint free world, Will Bowen, it'll come up for sure. Ah, okay. Nice. And you just mentioned uh, the other tools uh, is one is mentorship, one is meditation. Uh, We actually um, just invited a coach um, two weeks ago to talk about meditation, how powerful meditation is uh, to cure yourself, you know, to save yourself from um, trauma. Um, That is really, really powerful. And for mentorship, um, our company, Celebration, because we have a tech company, right? So our company is actually developing an app. Um, So it's an app for women networking. And uh, in this app, we're going to have coffee chat. So we're going to have mentorships. So we we also really value mentorships uh, throughout the past few years on our platform. We have so many um, young professionals, younger generation, they they get inspired by, you know, like immigrations who came here earlier and they achieved on certain level, right? And then they came back and then they give back and then they share their experience and they learned a lot. So so this is why it really drives us to develop this app so we can connect people and let them enjoy more mentorship. So I I do agree that mentorship is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, See, that's where your son gets it from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, in, in my introduction, we talked about your work with um, uh, Tom Campbell for the, um, the book, My Big Toe. Um, could you share with us some of your experience? Yeah. Well, that's How did it. you know him? Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, not too well known uh these unless you're you know you're familiar with physics or uh, consciousness research but um and i never really was <laughs> not so much physics i was always i was always interested in uh 
I was interested in a little trying to understand the nature of reality. You know, why why do we exist and what is this existence anyway? And that's what led me to to find to meet Tom. Um, but he has been my mentor for the past when did I first come across him? 2015, I want to say so about the past seven years now. And um, so Tom Campbell has created a a, a, a big toe it's called right mbt is my big toe and so a toe in physics is an acronym it stands for uh, theory of everything toe mm-hmm. and so einstein also created a toe he created the theory of relativity and he was able to understand you know uh, how things work why they work the way that they do but then when he discovered quantum physics which is the, the really really tiny it didn't make sense and he said that it's um weird and wacky science and he couldn't he couldn't understand it so fast forward to today and so this physicist tom campbell the the theory that he's created it does understand quantum physics as well as um physics on a large scale so his that's why he calls it the big toe because not only is it does he understand things on a small scale but also on a big scale so more important to that than just physics is the understanding your place in the universe and 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 the reason for existence uh, so he wrote a trilogy it's it's a very uh long book um and when i first came across it i actually was i was, I was dating at the time this is when i was single just left my husband and i divorced and um i met somebody who told me that they were going to uh, i went for a coffee date with this guy and he he was telling me he was he, we, we were both into this kind of metaphysical you know paranormal stuff that uh, some people refer to as like woo woo <laughs> uh-huh. and so uh, he was telling me how he was on his way to go to this place called the monroe institute and the monroe institute is and i'd never heard of it until then but it's a place, it's kind of like a, a real living, a real day modern Hogwarts or, or school of magic where wow. folks can go. Yeah. And folks go there from all around the world to learn about the paranormal. They learn how to, to actually themselves do telekinesis or remote viewing or astral projection. So all these things that you hear about, you read about, you hear these accounts, you can actually go there and learn how to do it yourself so that you have this, this direct experience with it. So telekinesis is like moving objects with your mind, right? Uh-huh. Uh, remote, yeah. So it's it's these types of things. So when he told me about it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And he's um, and he started talking more and more about it. And I'm like, how did you get started? And he said, well, there's a physicist, and this physicist, he uh, he does all this. He knows how to remote view. He goes out of body. And I'm like, a scientist actually does that. Where he documents it really, like it's not just somebody making it up. And uh, that turned out to be Tom Campbell. So. Oh, when I heard about that, I said, I need to meet this man. And so I went to the Monroe Institute, took some of their courses, and, uh, and I met Tom. Oh, wait, where is that? Uh, it's in Virginia, the Monroe Institute. Oh, yeah. wow. Nice. So, mm. so tell us about your book. How is it related to this big toe, the theory of everything? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah, absolutely. So... Okay, so I came across it, you know, 2015. And when I first met Tom, I had so many questions. I was like, how does this all work? And he was answering all my questions. And uh, it took me a couple of years to, to really to really get my, my brain around it. See, I had always had this natural, I'd always had like intuitively, I felt like there was more, right? I felt like there's, there has got to be life after death, like all these things. I'm like, there's got to be, there's got to be. But I could never logically make sense of it. And so this book helped me to logically make sense of things. It answered all the questions that I was tra- that I was asking, right? Um, and so from there, it, it really helped me because it was it was an on ramp to a bigger picture. It helped me to get a clear understanding of what my purpose is. And so because it helped me so much, I wanted to help other people with the through my own experience. And so I. I like I said, seven years of me fumbling my way through trying to understand it and apply all of the the teachings on a practical level, so it wasn't just theoretical, um, I was able to really benefit. And so I put my experience into a book and I call it My Big Ego. And it's basically me, 
you know, tripping over my ego, my ego getting in the way, my fear coming up and like sabotaging relationships and opportunities. And then how I would take the principles that I learned and then apply them and be able to come out wiser or, or, or better than before. And um, so that's basically what the book is. It's the book is how to apply the teachings of my big toe in your own life to be able to um, live your life in a way where you feel aligned with your purpose. What, when is going to uh, come out? Hopefully a year. I'm working with a publisher right now. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be probably about a year. I'm, I'm, I've got high standards. <laughs> so I need to be perfect. No, I'm trying to like go to that. But yeah, I figure, I figure in one year it'll be released. Wow. Very excited to see it. To yeah. Thank you. I finished the first draft, but I, I still need to edit and, and do all that good stuff. Yeah. So I didn't know that you, you're interested in, in physics too. It, it sounds like you're learning so many things. <laughs> you're always like half this eager to learn things. How do, how do you keep that? Uh, I have a really smart husband. <laughs> I said that because he's over there. <laughs> Who's supervising this whole life stream? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, but no, how do I, I don't, I think I was just, yeah, I think you, you just have that. It's funny because I used to teach uh, leadership and development to Indigenous communities and um, and all different vulnerable populations. And I remember creating my curriculum, like, okay, so I got to talk about purpose and like meaning in life and all of that. And I remember talking to them about it and they all kind of had like blank stares. And I was like, like, you guys ask you, like, you ask why you're here, right? Like, what's the purpose? And a lot of them were like, no. And I was like, oh, I thought we all did. <laughs> so I, I think it's just something that I've always had. And yeah, mm -hmm. just naturally. Yeah. Um, we just, me and my, um, a bunch of girlfriends, we just had this uh, conversation for uh, during my vacation. And we had this, uh, like, funny theory that, you know, how to keep a woman um, young and, um, you know, like um, vibrant all the time you know? <laughs> is to keep learning and be curious all the time, like a kid. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're a mom or you're a wife, you know, or you're a business owner or whatever age you are, as long as you're um, curious about the whole world on your face, you're shining this curiosity and like a child. And that makes you look young. <laughs> yeah I love yeah. that that's really and, and 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 to do that too is don't be afraid to ask the questions right because a lot of us we won't know something and so I'm I'm new to to politics I don't know anything about politics and now that now I'm really interested in it so I'm always asking my husband because he knows a lot about politics I'm always like so how does this work and how does what's the cabinet and and to like I'm thinking to myself, these sound like really dumb questions, like that most <laughs> people learned in school. But um, to be courageous enough to just be like, no, it's it's okay. I'm learning it now, and, and that's okay. Um, yeah, a lot of us are afraid to ask questions and fear of looking stupid, right? Yeah. So what is? Um, I know your big goal is to change the world, to change a lot of people. But what is your next step goal? Is there a next step goal? <laughs> that question. <laughs> yeah, cool. Hmm, let's see. My next step goal. Um, in terms of well, there's so many things that just popped up into my head. I'm like, which one, Vanessa? <laughs> <laughs> I like to have lots of things going on. But I would say so the first thing that actually popped into my head um was my son, just because his birthday is coming up on uh Saturday. So really wanting wait, to be wait, eight, the eighth? Um, July, July, or sorry, August, August 6th. We have the same birthday. Oh, really? Yes. That's oh, what wow. I do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a coincidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, mm -hmm. so the next step in life is, is, is to be present with, uh, with my children and to, to lead by example and to be a positive influence in their life and to be the best mom that I can be. Wow. Very powerful. As a mom, <laughs> gives me goosebumps. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, on our platform, we have um, so many women. We have um, basically two um, like major groups. One is young professionals. One is women that has their own business, like women entrepreneurs. 
So I, I'd like to um, hear your suggestions for women who is, because you had your, your business, right? You are running your own organizations, the second organizations too. So what, what, what advice would you give for women entrepreneurs when they start a business here in Canada? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that to, to do it, you know, to move forward, to take action, take action and know that everything you do is leading you one step closer to your goal, whether or not it turns out to be something that you expected it to be. Uh, so if you to try things, to try new things and don't be afraid to fail, ultimately, because I think what, what prevents us from trying different things is that is the fear of failure is the fear, fear of um, what other people are going to think if it doesn't work out. But it always works out. Just not work out. It may not work out in the way that you think it w- should, but it often works out if you have the right intention in mind and you're doing something for the greater good, for good you know, reasons, then it'll always work out and often work out better than you could have ever imagined. Wow. So don't be afraid. Keep trying. Always mm-hmm. listen to your own voice. <laughs> right because uh, a lot of time when we start a business um, or a project there are a lot of voices around us right you can't do this you have so many kids you know you're so busy all the time how could you do this you know how do you balance everything but yeah. I see that women are all multitaskers we are yeah, yeah. we were born that way it's, yeah. it's in our we we're yeah we we're built like that to be multitaskers right yeah. so let's yeah. use it to our advantage yeah yeah. Um, and, and that that whole I can attitude, right? Mm-hmm. I can, I can. And just catching yourself anytime you hear those those negative voices telling you that you might not be able to, or you're too old, or you're too young, you're too fat, whatever it is, then catching yourself and being like, wait, I can do this, I can do this. Mm-hmm. And having that be your mantra. And I can attitude and surrounding yourself with others who also have the I can, we can, you can, that attitude, that positive energy is so contagious. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. And keep yourself surrounded in a community that supports each other, Mm -hmm. influence each other in a really good, positive way. That's right. Yeah. That supports each other and lifts each other up and, and knowing that we don't have all the answers we need to learn from each other and uh, yeah. And having those mentors that you can reach out to for support, guidance, and advice. Mm Mm-hmm. So is there any ways that you can recommend like um, for people, like how, how do they find a mentor or what do they need to pay attention when it comes to like finding a mentor? Find somebody doing what you want to be doing <laughs> and then reach out to them. Don't be afraid to reach out. People love it when you reach out. Oftentimes people are like, no, they're too busy. I don't want to bother them, but they appreciate it. Like I, I know what it's like, for me, if somebody's trying to start a nonprofit and they email me and they say that they see how lunch has grown, they want to learn right away. I'll, I'll send them my calendar link and be like, yes, let's, let's book 30 minutes. And I'd love to chat with you. I, Cause I, I'm like, that's so you're taking initiative. You're so eager. And that's what I did too. You know, and I still do that. I still do that. I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, reached out to the executive director of a uh, huge charity, um, mm-hmm. took him out for lunch. Cause I wanted to learn how to take our charity to the next level. Obviously I can't do it cause I'm only seeing this perspective where I'm, where I'm at, but he can see a bigger picture. So I want to, I want to see where we're at from his point of view. Right. So yeah, always being able to reach out to people is important too. Yeah. Don't be afraid to reach out. Very good advice. We have, uh, I have to write down all your bullet points. It's so wonderful <laughs> on the chat room. <laughs> we have uh, people writing down your, uh, your, your bullet points on the chat room. They're repeating your positive points. That's really wonderful and beautiful. Um, so for mentors, it's so important to have someone that's guiding you and leading you because a majority of the time we can't do it by ourselves. We can't do it all. Right. So it, it's nice to have someone to, you know, like to guide us, to lead us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it you, cause I talked about, you know, Tom Campbell, he's a mentor, but it's also, you know, certain times you're reaching out and you're looking externally, you're, you're gaining, you're getting that uh, support and that guidance. And then other times you need to look within and it's more internal work. Right. So it's not, you're not constantly always on this kind of this race to like, be active and take action. Sometimes 
you do need to do that. You reach out, take action, do a lot of activities, but then you need to also slow down, reflect, you know, are these choices the right ones? Do I need to do things differently? So it's, it's a little bit of both. Wow. Amazing. So the biggest takeaway for tonight, <laughs> um, what, what, what is it? The biggest takeaway that our audience can get tonight. Sure. Yeah. So what is the biggest takeaway I would say is to, yeah, so to be really, to be aware of your, your thinking, your choices and who you choose to surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So choose wow. wisely who you, who you want to spend your time with because life is short. So choose the people that you love and that can, can lift you up and together we will all rise together wow. <laughs> beautiful i have a uh, audience asking about um if they can join your volunteer program how do they join yeah awesome we would love that so lowentropy.org uh, if you go to the community page you will see a part there that says opportunities mm -hmm. and then um or get involved, get involved, and then volunteer opportunities. And from there, you can uh, apply online. So they can do uh, anywhere, right? You have different locations um, in um, major cities? Well, our office is in Coquitlam near Vancouver, and then everything else is virtual. So yeah, most of, I would say 90% of our volunteer opportunities are virtual. Okay, so they can do the volunteer work um, online. Yes, that's right. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, they said, yeah, very happy to know that. Gonna check it out. <laughs> Great, please do. Amazing. All right, Vanessa, thank you so much for tonight's um, event. It's, we, we have so, we covered so many. <laughs> we covered so many tonight. And I uh, can't wait to have you actually have an um, in-person event pretty soon in the future. Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. i would love that thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your community tonight it was really this was a lot of fun and i'd, I'd love yeah. to do it again I really appreciate it's it very valuable and they all love the content you offer tonight and then um we are very happy to have you back very soon in the future awesome anytime thank you so yeah. much so for the audience in the live stream thank you for watching us good night and uh, for those who are in china good morning <laughs> um, bye